for an MRS in your network. An MRS is a type of media gateway which handles IMS traffic. It handles the, the, the media of the IMS traffic. All right, so if you have an MRS and then a media gateway in your network, the connection that you have between these two is what we call the MB. Maybe to, I don't really get you well. Maybe to, can you maybe tell me the, the flow between maybe I want to call someone who is in Uganda and uh, I will be using the SIP track. How be the, the flow? All right, so a SIP invite will be sent to their um, node, right? Their SIP agent, all right? Mm -hmm. Now, when all those parameters have been agreed between these two, what codecs will be used and everything, then yes. we have the user plane um, setup being done, being instructed by the GCP because we have GCP also in the IMS network. So GCP would instruct the media gateway to set up a connection, a media connection between their media gateways, all right? So let's take, for example, between you and Uganda, right? There is yes. um, a SIP connection. Yes. There is what we call maybe a SIP connection, right? Mm. After the SIP has been established, the two media gateways needs to speak with each other. That will be how the RTP packets will be sent to and fro. So in order for that to happen, the MSC needs to instruct the media gateway that, hey, set up this connection. The connection that will be set up between these two media gateways, right, is what we call the NB. NB. Yeah. Okay. Now, in some networks, you may not have um, like an MRS because the same SBG is handling both the SIP and then the, um, the, the traffic. You understand? So there is no separation between the node that handles the, um, the, the SIP and then the, the uh, what do you call it? The traffic. Let me give an example. Mm. The SBG of Ericsson, right? Okay. Had the media component in the same SBG. So in that same SBG, it is connecting to the MSC, and it is also connecting to the, um, the media gateway. Why? Because if I want to set up the call, I need to speak to the control parts of the node, which is the SBC. So in the SBG, we have what we call the SBC, and then we have the MRF, the media resource function. So the media resource function is what com communicates with the media gateway. Now that type of connection between the media gateway and the MRF, right, is what we call the, um, the MB, you understand? So what is now for when you want, you want to set up a connection between you as operator and the, your carrier? I know there will be SPC between, in between. That is what I just explained to you. Um, I don't know where, how I should say it again, but let me repeat myself. In your network, you have an SBC, right? Yes. In the SBC, is it, does it have a separate media gateway or the SBC is handling both the user... Yeah, it does both. handling both the SIP and then the user traffic. How does yes. it work? It handles both. User plane and the uh, traffic. Okay, uh, so traffic and signaling. The same as SBC, mm. right? It connects to an MSC. Yes. The same SBC would also connect to the media gateway. Okay. Yeah. So whenever you want to make a call to make an international call, or yes. or everything will come into the SBC, then the SBC will now mask the traffic and send it to 
um, Europe or to Uganda or wherever it is. When it gets to that point, mm. it's SBC to SBC. That is the communication. So it means that Uganda also has an SBC at their end point, which will terminate the SBC traffic. And it will now convert that traffic. We will send the traffic to the MSC and the media gateway in the Uganda network. I got you in now. OK. OK. But there, there is some case. Let's say, for instance, we are connecting with the Airtel here, Airtel Rwanda. Mm -hmm. So I think we don't have SBC in, in picture. We connect directly with the, the MSC and our media gateway. So then that one is not an IMS network. That is a, that is a, um, a simple SIP network, which still uses the NB. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's still an NB connection or an external NB connection. It's yeah. not um, a pure IMS connection. To the confusion I, I, I had, but now it is clear. Okay. So when I'm connecting to the media gateway directly, it is NB connection. Yes. When I'm connecting to an media gateway of an IMS, it is an MB connection. Connection. Mm. Clear then now. We, all right, good. Then we have the transport nodes, all right? So the transport nodes is where you have the IP routers, the backbone IP routers. You have the layer two, layer three switches, all right? Which is um, the extreme switches, the Huawei Cloud Edge um, series and um, the security gateways, which are the firewalls, all right? And then we have the uh, frequency and time synchronization, like the Symmetricon and then the CBC. You have the NTP. So another um, frequency and time synchronization node is the NTP, all right? So I'm sure in your network, you have the NTP, all right? Which provides the time and synchronization for all kinds of traffic in a network. So in the... Um, Connectivity layer, these are the different nodes that exist. Okay, so the IP backbone routers, IP routers, right, made up of Junipan, made up of the smart edges, made up of the Cisco um, ESRs, and then the Huawei NG nodes, right? And then we have the switches, which can be an extreme switch, which can be a Huawei Cloud Edge series. Then we have the firewalls, and that example is the Juniper networks. And we have the frequency and time synchronization nodes, such as the Symmetricon, the CBC, the NTP. Okay, so these are also nodes that exist in the connectivity layer. Now, moving on to the control layer, um, the control layer is the nodes, you know, which handles the mobility management, the call and connection control. In the CS domain, the core control node is the MSC server, and it's clearly identifiable unit controlling the media gateways. All right. Now, we also have other support nodes that participate in the control layer, such as the GMSC server, the TSC server, the STPs, HLRs, AUCs, FNRs, and then the EIR. All right. So sometimes you may have the possibility of these functionalities existing in one physical node. All right, so we'll touch on these things as we go by. The main node, as we mentioned, is the MSC, right, which handles the call control, handles the um, call setup, supervision, charging, the teardown, GCP signaling, the media gateway, instructing the media gateway for resource management, I mean, for connection of the circuit switch and call parts terminates the A interface and then the IUCS interface. It also connects to the SGSN in the packet switch domain using the GS interface. Um, it incorporates what we call the visiting location register, which stores temporary subscriber data for currently registered subscribers in its MSC service area. Okay, so basically that is what the MSC is. It's a control node. Right, it's a node that initiates the charging. All right, it's a node which would also tear down when the call is done, it will tear down. It will also supervise the call flow. All right, 
it connects to the media gateway, instructing media gateway. Hey, media gateway, give this resource to this guy at this time, right? Now, I want you to you to release the the um, the resources. Okay, then media gateway obeys. Um, it also terminates, connects to what we call the RAN network. So the RAN network, we have two main networks now. We have what we call the um, GSM, the GRAN, right, which it connects using the A interface. And then we have the um, WCDMA RAN, right, which uses the IUCS interface. And then in the same node, we have the VLR, which temporarily stores subscriber data for those that are currently registered in the MSC. Now, moving on to the functions, I mean, we've already touched on them, I mean, in the first paragraph. So again, call control and then related supplementary services for um, CS services. We have the mobility management for the um, CS services. We have the media gateway control and we have the charging control. Now, in the first uh, slide for the uh, control layer, right? We mentioned that some of the functions are co-located, right? So you have an MSC which may function as a TSC, which may also function as a GMSC. Okay, so what is a TSC? So the TSC is part of the control plane which routes calls outside the PLMN network to other interconnected networks such as the PSTN and the ISDN. So um, in a, let's take for example, our connection with Airtel Rwanda, right? Now, at the moment that NYMBC is sending traffic towards the MSC of Airtel Rwanda, at that moment, it is acting as a TSC. It is acting as a transit switching center. You understand? Okay. The TSC also acts as a gateway um, providing signaling conversion between the big to ISAP between two P elements and then other external networks. Okay, so sometimes the network that is connecting to is an old network such as an ISAP. You're still using the ISAP. So the TSC does the, con um, the, the conversion between these protocols. And as I mentioned earlier, the TSC is usually integrated on the same platform as the MSC. So NYMBC, RMMBC, they are MSCs, all right. But then whenever it wants to send traffic to external networks such as Airtel Rwanda and MTN Uganda, it acts as what we call a TSC, a transit switching center. Now, the same MSC is also what we call the GMSC, can act as what we call the GMSC. So the GMSC is an MSC server, right? which that includes the GMSC application works as an interface between the mobile network and other networks for mobile terminating calls, all right? So here, how does a node act as a GMSC? It does so by terminating. So whenever a call is being terminated, that is where your MSC acts as a GMSC. So if it wants to terminate a call, from an external network, if it wants to terminate a call from an internal subscriber, then it is a GMSC. Another functionality of the GMSC is interrogation of HLR for the location of a subscriber. All right, so GMSC has two main functionalities to terminate traffic, incoming traffic, and then also to interrogate the HLR for the location of the subscriber that we are terminating. All right. So, so what this would be the, hmm. the difference between TS, TS and GMSC? TSC is originating towards the external network. So if I want to send traffic 
originate traffic towards an external network. It's a TSE. If I want to receive traffic from an external network, it's a GMAC. Yeah. Okay, exactly. Yeah. But no. TSE doesn't have the functionality of uh, interrogating. It's only for GMAC. Yep. Okay, so the G, this way, so the, the, this way, when a subscriber at the PSTN wants to make a call to a mobile subscriber, the PSTN exchange will access the network by first connecting the call to a GMSC. So if we are receiving a call from Airtel Rwanda, right? Uh, Airtel Rwanda hits, uh, MSC will hit our MSC to want to know, hey, um, I want to connect to this subscriber. Then when it hits NY NBC at that moment, it becomes what we call a GMSC. GMSC. A GMSC would interrogate the HLR. Hey, where is this guy? Kindly give me the location of this guy. Then it sends the what we call the mobile station routing number to the um, the G the MSC that wants to terminate the call. Then it connects directly to the terminating MSC. That okay, here you are. Kindly connect to this guy using this routing number. This MSC using this um, routing number. So it does the connection. And then the call goes through. All right. So that is the difference between a TSC and then a GMS. All right. Then we have the SMS GMSC. All right. So it, it's it's as we've explained for the, the voice, right? This is specifically for SMS. All right. So if I want to terminate, right? a short message from a, a service center, I would interrogate the HLR, okay, for routing information and message waiting data and delivering a short message to the MSC of the receiving MS. Okay, so it is the same um, explanation that I've given to you, right, for a terminating um, call. But here it is for a terminating what? SMS. SMS. Is it clear? Yes, it is clear. All right. Now, the SMS interworking MSC, right, is capable of receiving a mobile originating short message from the MSC or an alert message from the HLR and submitting the message to the sender's SC. So the SMS IW MSC functionality is normally integrated in the MSC. So here you see that one MSC is acting as a TSC. In another instance, it is acting as what? A GMSC. In another instance, it is acting as what? An SMS GMSC. In another instance, it is acting as what we call the IW MSC. The difference between the SMS GMSC and the SMS IW MSC is because the GMS, SMS, GMSC is, will act as an agent to terminate the traffic from the SC, all right? If um, the SMSC sends um, an SMS to a subscriber, the MSC that will terminate that subscriber's um, SMS, right? It's what we call the SMS, GMSC. The MSC that will, would send the originated um, SMS, mobile originated SMS to the service center. Okay, as you can clearly see the flow, is what we yes. call the um, SMS interworking MSC. So please take note of that. It's, it's very, very important. Now we move to HLR. So HLR is a permanent storage of, um, I know that stores the, has a permanent store of all the subscribers in our network. So are we done with the functionality of MSC? You don't yeah. touch with on uh, STP. I don't know if it's among the functionality. Did you touch the STP? No, no, we we haven't talked about STP. We we are moving on to um, what we call the, H, the HLR. But if you want us to talk about STPs, we will talk about it 
more in the module two. We'll see yeah, more of SCPs in module two. It's another functionality of MSC, I guess. It is, but it's uh, in terms of services, it's not really a functionality. It's just a transport of signaling look, um, yeah. traffic. That's it. It's just a, a signaling transport point. So yeah, it doesn't terminate the message. It doesn't, it doesn't even know what is in the message. Okay, okay. So, I mean, that is why it, it, we may consider it as one of the functionalities, but in terms of um, intelligence, it just transports the, data, the information, like what our SPXs does. Our SPXs act as transport agents of all signaling traffic. Sometimes not even go opening the 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 um, the information being transported to know what is inside because it only gets to level layer the NTP three layer. It doesn't go above SCCP and um, TCAP and MAP exist still exists with the MSC. STP only handle up to the MTP three layer or and the M3 M3 UA layer. It doesn't go um, you know above that. So again, that's that's it for the STP. The HLR um, we all know is the node which stores all subscriber data, all right, for um, not only for CS traffic, but also for PS traffic, you understand? And in the case of IMS, we have the HSS. It doesn't only store the subscriber and the, the, the information we provision for the subscriber, but it also stores the location of the subscriber, all right? So if I want to know where a subscriber is located, I need to check the HLR first. It will give me the MSC7 area of the subscriber, all right? Then we have, it also connects to the AUC. The AUC is a node which it's, um, connection is with the um, HLR. MSC does not connect directly to AUC. So the flow is from MSC to HLR to AUC. All right. So there isn't a direct connection between MSC and then the AUC. So the interfacing node is the HLR. Where, so in the um, HLR, you have this connection towards the AUC, which stores the authentication parameters. And then whenever you have a new subscription created, it's, regis it's registered in the operator's um, mm -hmm. HLR. All right, so as I mentioned before, the HLR connects to the MSCs, the SGSNs, and then in the, some cases, the USSD gateways, the charging networks, you know, using the MAP protocol. And you can have a case whereby an HLR is implemented in an MSC VLR, all right? All right, or the monolithic um, MSC, or in the new MSC server, all right? Or it can be a standalone, MS, um, standalone node, all right? So these are the different ways by which we can physically deploy HLR. Nowadays, we have standalone HLRs because um, the designers observe that if you put these different nodes together, in the case of trying to scale up, right, you have a problem because does it mean you buy a new um, HLR and MSC and then, um, I mean, a node that contains all the different functionalities, no. It doesn't make financial sense. So that is the reason why we have separate nodes for HLR, we have separate nodes for MSCs, we have separate nodes for media gateways. So that in case whereby you observe maybe one of the nodes is, is, is um, the capacity is full, you only expand the, the, that line of nodes. You don't need to expand all three of them, them at the same time. Now, the AUC, have, I made mention of it briefly in when I was explaining the HLR because they connect, they have a connection together. And what it does is that it secures the, uh, it identifies and then the keys, all right? The algorithm necessary for generating authentication 
and the ciphering data, you know, all these things are stored in the AUC, all right? And is used by different network elements to protect the network. So different net network elements being the MSC and then the SGSN against authorized use of the system. However, it's always, always only used by and connected to the HLR. So this is something that you need to take note of. Now, the AUC provides the HLR with the authentication parameters and ciphering keys by generating the triplets or the quintets for, um, so triplets for G GSM and then the quintets for the WCDME. And using this triplet and quintet ciphering of data and speech data and signaling over the A interface are performed, both provide system security. So again, the AUC can be imp implemented as a standalone node, but it's usually co-located with the HLR on the same AXC platform node. All right, so that is it for the AUC. This is, these are just, we are just introducing the nodes, yeah. all right? We will talk about them in detail in the- um, But I see here as a, for our case, Mm. We have CUDB that integrated together with the AUC. Mm -hmm. Okay, so UTC. let me let me let me briefly explain that um, architecture. So it is still AUC FE, uh huh. Mm. HLR FE. Yes. You get it, but yes, the information itself is stored in the CUDB. You understand? So the CUDB is the physical um, storage of the data, the raw data, the raw information is stored in the CUDB. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The logic of communicating or making, um, responding to um, the nodes such as the MSC, the um, SGSN is handled by the front ends, which is the AUC FE and then the uh, HLR FE. All right. So, yes, the AUC FE and the HLR FE exist in the front end part of the node. They still exist. But then the storage, the physical storage of the data is in the CUDB. CUDB, yeah. Okay. So, we move on to the EIR. So, the EIR um, stores what we call the MI the International Mobile Station um, Equipment Identity, all right? Each node, each um, mobile station, each um, user equipment has this MI, all right? Um, sometimes, some, unfortunately, there are some phone manufacturers who don't give proper MIs to the, the node, the, the, their um, equipment. So you find that, sorry, you find that <laughs> the most of these um, phone manufacturers, some of um, like the those that provide uh, pro, uh, provide the the Chinese. The, you remember the when we had a lot of Chinese phones in the network. When you try to check the MI because they were not standardized, you you will only find one. MI for all of them, which was a problem. I mean, in the beginning, we had a lot of these problems. But eventually, they, um, they, since you don't want to lose these guys, the network had to find a way of accommodating all of them. You understand? So um, that is a little history about the EIR, right? MI is supposed to be unique, but because these phone manufacturers were not standard phone guys, they were using the same MI or same variants of the MI for the, the, the their phones that they manufacture. All right. So in the MI, you can have your phone, your, your MI being in your um, EIR, sorry, you can have your phone being white listed, your MI being white listed, gray listed, black listed, or unknown equipment. All right. Now, in the case whereby your phone is blacklisted or unknown, it means that you will not be given access to the network. 
And um, in some cases, you have the AUC and the EIR implemented either as standalone nodes or as combined you know, nodes. Okay, so again, we have the AUC FE, we have the EIR FE, we have the HLR FE, okay? Now these different nodes communicate with the CUDB. All the information is stored in the CUDB. If you have an, um, um, a UDC in your network, everything is stored in the CUDB, but then the logic of the communication between the different external nodes such as MSCs and SGSNs are handled in the logical part of the UDC platform, which is the front end. But I think from our case, we have a standalone EAR. Aha, uh -huh. so if you have in the, then that's, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm just explaining in the yeah. case whereby you have the um, EIR as Im implemented as a, an FE. All right, yeah. so you can also have that kind of scenario. Yeah, yeah. All right. Then we have the FNR, right? The flexible number register, which introduced what we call the MNP. The, that's the uh, mobile number portability. All right. So predominantly, if a subscriber wants to maintain his number on the, um, he maybe Etel, uh, the a subscriber is an Etel. Rwanda subscriber and he comes into your network and he says that I still want to maintain my number. He, there is that flexibility to do that. And this is achieved by what we call the um, FNR. That's a flexible number um, register. All right. So the node that does the translation between your network and then the other network, right, is the FNR. All right. So that so is this FNR. Point. This FNR works mostly when there is two networks that want to, to merge. Yes. Not to I merge see. per se, but um, to be able to um, make, to keep a subscriber, um, a subscriber from an old network at the other network on your network. You understand? Every subscriber is given a mobile station identity number, right? He's given an MSISDN. Now, if a subscriber from Etel Rwanda says that, you know what, I want to keep my number, but I want to switch to MTN Rwanda, it is possible because of FNR. All right, then we move. This is the last slide. Okay, so here we are it's going to talk, we are, we, we, we are touching on the vast layer, which is the service layer or the application layer, all right? So here you have um, nodes such as the charging system, you have nodes such as the SMSC, you have nodes such as the USSD, all right? So these different, different nodes uh, provide special services which cannot be given in the control um, you know, plane, all right? The control plane is purely for voice, purely for SMS, right? But maybe you want to provide other services, other promotions. You want to provide other um, um, bonanzas or however you, you guys call it, right? You want to make your subscribers enjoy some discounts and other things. So these different, different things will be handled in the service layer. And we have a course for that as well is the intelligence network um, intermediary course, which delves deeply, all right? So if you want to learn more about the, um, I, the in, intelligent network or the vast network, all right, you can, we have a course purely made for that which is um, the same price as um, the CCIC course that we are doing currently, all right? So in, in short, um, we've learned about the different nodes, all right, that exist in the different layers, all right? So in the control layer, we have, um, we have 
the MSCs, the TSCs, we have the GMSCs, we have the SMS, um, GMSC, we have the SMS interworking MSC, IW MSC, we have um, the EIRs, the FNRs, the AUCs, the STPs, all right? So these different, different, different nodes exist in the control plane. Then in the um, media plane or in the user plane or in the connectivity plane, we have the media gateways, we have the transport nodes such as the um, layer three, the routers, all right? We have the switches, we have the firewalls, all right? And we have the, um, the, the frequency and time synchronization such as the NTP, the CBC, the symmetricons, all right? So these different nodes exist in the connectivity layer. Now, the service layer is where you have, you add value to your services, all right? So you can have um, promotions, you can have um, these televoting. So if, if let's say um, it's, it's, they are doing a singing competition, you put a number out there that if you want to vote for this guy, enter this code, blah, blah, blah. All these things will be handled by the vast aspects of the telecom network, all right? And that aspect exists in what we call the service layer or the application layer. If a subscriber is going to be charged, all right, maybe at a discount or maybe for free, it will be done at that same layer, all right, which I've, I've already said that if you want to delve deep into that, we have a course, um, the ENIC, which is the um, in, uh, Intelligent Network Intermediary course, and we are currently developing the advanced course for the ENIC. All right, so if let's say you, you've learned, you learn about this and you want to go further into that, you can, you know, go ahead to do that as well. All right, so basically, um, this is just the introductory bit for the CCIC course. Um, hopefully, tomorrow in the afternoon, we will look at the... Um, module two, which will cover the concepts, the principles, interfaces, protocols of the second core network, all right? So basically these are the areas that we are going to look at, all right, hopefully tomorrow. Um, what are interfaces, what are protocols, what are network planes? Then we'll delve deep into the interfaces. We'll look at SS7, we'll look at the structure of SS7, Sectran, um, Comparison between the STP and then the Sectran, then we'll end up with the Sectran protocol suite. All right, then we complete the course for module two. So basically, this is it for module one. If you have any questions, you can go ahead and ask. I think you already answered my question. All right, all right, all right. Right. Okay. So we can end the call today and we continue tomorrow. Yeah, sure. Thank you. All right. Okay. Thank you for joining. Thank and you. then see you tomorrow. See you. Good day. All right. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.